Ah, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located in Delmont, Pennsylvania, where we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my right would be... Caitlin West from Seton Hill University. And on my left... Amelia Dever from St. Francis University. So, when I asked you to introduce yourself, you gave us your... Name. You gave us your name, as, as did you, Emily. I did. So the idea is, where did these names come Where did your name come from, Caitlin? Did you give it to yourself? My mom and dad. Your mother and father gave it to you? Mm -hmm. And uh, yours, Emily? Did, did you pick yours out? No, I did not. Okay. If you had to pick a name out for yourself, uh, would, you would you change it? I don't think so. You know? How about you, Emily? I don't think I'd change it. Would mine. you change your name? No. No. Okay. Well, so one of the most momentous decisions that an expectant's parents can make is the naming of their child. Why would, why would that be so, Kayla? It's with them for their whole life. It's with them their whole life. And when we give someone a name, we're, we're giving it a label, are we not? We are. Right. So one of the ideas about when we name something, we also label it, and it gives us a little bit of power for and control. So in the Christian Bible, what was one of the commands that the, the Creator, that God gave to uh, Adam about all the things on the earth? Adam was to name all the animals. He was to name all the animals. That must have took a considerable amount of time. Okay. However, so, and again, we'll review this. Why, why do we name pets, Emily? Uh, in order to have control. In order to have control. So sometimes pets are like thoughts and feelings, are they not, Caitlin? Mm -hmm. So if you, had a, if you had a dog and it ran outside and you didn't have it in a name, could you, could you call it back? Mm -mm. You couldn't. You'd be yeah. lost, wouldn't you? Yeah. So that your thoughts, is in the same way your thoughts and feelings would be running all over unless we gave it a name and gave a label and describe it, okay? So remember, there's, there's tremendous power in a name. Do any of you remember the... Uh, Story Rumpelstiltskin? Vaguely, yeah. Rumpelstiltskin, <laughs> where uh, the princess, they, they made some fantastic lie up and said that she could spin, she could spin uh, straw into gold. Okay? Well, the king uh, got her and said, okay, I'll give you till morning to spring to, to, to do that. However, she could, or, or he was going to execute her. So she made a deal with this uh, particular imp called. Uh, Rumpelstiltskin, who didn't give her his name, and allowed her to show her the magic to do that. And however, in exchange for that gift of spinning straw into gold, he had to promise, she had to promise to give him her first birth child. Okay? So, unless she guessed his name. And she did, and it was Rumpelstiltskin, which broke the spell. So there's a lot of power in a name, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so do any of you remember uh, the, the term abracadabra? Mm -hmm. So abra abracadabra is associated with magic. with magic, and with magic, what do you do? You create things. You create things, right. So perhaps this might be adventurous to uh, some of the folks out there. Actually, abracadabra is a translation from ancient Aramaic. Does anyone know where ancient Aramaic was spoken? Mm -hmm. Arabic was spoken in the Middle East. It was a language of uh, the Christian Bible's Jesus. Okay, that, that was the language that they that they spoke back then, Aramaic, and it means I create what I speak. I create what I speak. And doesn't it, what, what does that mean to you? I create what I speak. That you're able to have the power over like what you say and to what you do, like your actions. True. Words mean something, do they not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever heard of the old uh, children's rhyme, sticks and stones may break my bones, words will never hurt me? Yeah. And that's nonsense, yeah. of course. You're, you're going to be a physician assistant, right? I am. So you both are going to, going to help heal wounds and, and ten broken bones, are you not? Mm -hmm. However, words are forever, are they not? They are. Words are forever. So the tongue is your only organ that's strong enough to break a heart. Did you ever think of that? Mm -hmm. And the words, the things that you say, the labels that you give to people? Were you ever mean and nasty when you were a child? Did you ever call people names? I'm sure, at least to my siblings, I'm I was. Sure. Did anyone ever call you names, mm -hmm. Kaylin? How'd that make you feel? Bad. Right. It kind of it, it dehumanizes you, right? Mm -hmm. It takes it takes away your humanity. It takes it takes away the person who you are. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a quote by W. C. Fields, and it said, "It's not what they call you, but what it's what you answer to." Would you answer to somebody who was calling you a less than? No. 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 Would you do that? Mm -hmm. No. No. So it's what you it's what you answer to, and that's that's a choice on your part, is it not? Yep. Okay. So one of the things about names is also. Are you familiar with Dale Carnegie at all? 
Carnegie Museums? Uh, that was Andrew Carnegie. Oops. But Dale Carnegie <laughs> wrote, a, uh, wrote a famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. Okay? And in it, what he said, it was one of the sweetest sounds that a person can hear is the sound of their own name. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I, and I, and for a while there, I was kind of teasing you, but sometimes I forgot, what was I calling you? You were calling me Natalie. And how did that make you feel? Like you didn't think I was important enough to know my own name. Then, 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 what did I, yeah, so that made you feel some mm -hmm. way, didn't it? Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't even know me or think I'm important enough to know me by my name. Mm -hmm. But then I began to tease you about it, so. Yeah. But that, that was okay. And it's important to know people's names, isn't it? It is. How are you at, how are you at names? I am not very good. It's definitely a skill I need to work on. Okay. Okay, so that's the thing. So what I'm asking everyone out there is to know the power of names and to know the power of labeling. And, you know, perhaps perhaps there's some things in the life that uh, you'd like to rename. Are there some things you'd like to rename, Caitlin? Yeah. Okay. Can you do that? No. You can, can't you? Mm hmm. Hmm? Sure. Oh sure, of course you can. You have the you have the power of choice, don't you? Yes. Would you like to rename some things? Sure, if you can. Okay. Well, one of the things is a great memory memory device too. So if you want to remember something and it's a common everyday item, give it give it some special name that only you would know. Would you like to develop your own language? Yeah. Yeah. So what what we're doing is we're not interested in helping people find themselves, right? Mm -hmm. What we're interested in doing is helping people create themselves. Mm -hmm. And you have that power your, yourself, do you not? I create what I speak. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you say to yourself, I'm fat, I'm lazy, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'll never be able to do anything, you're creating that image, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that image is created by others, is it not? It is. And we develop that inner critic inside us. And however, when that inner critic speaks and all it can do is tell lies, and remember, we speak what we create. Mm -hmm. So, how would you like to create yourself? Would you like to, and this involves self-validation. Mm -hmm. Are you a good student? I think so. Mm -hmm. Are you a good daughter? I think so. Are you a good friend? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea is to say that to yourself. Okay. You can say that to yourself. You, you, you can call yourself all those things. And those are labeling, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Those are naming, are they not? Mm -hmm. So, what are some of your good qualities, Emily? Uh, I think I'm loyal, and I try to, my best to be honest as much as possible. And um, I'm a good student. Do you ever say those hard. things to yourself? Do you ever do you ever give names to those? Not often. Not often. For no. those, most people do not, do they? No. Okay. So my challenge out there for everyone today is to rewrite your life, and to be able to start to rewrite your life is to be able to label and describe. Remember, you have that power of choice. You have those words within you, and remember, make those words your own. Speak those words from your own heart, and that's truly one of my wishes for you, and also you, Emily. And as always, at the end of every podcast, what we like to say is a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, I ask that you fish without bait. And your challenge is to do a kindness for yourself and do a kindness for another. Namaste.